Where's the... Whoa. <sighs> Subtle venom. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and we're continuing our countdown to Maximum Venom, which by the time this airs, I think this is going to air on Sunday, I'm going to try to post it up on Sunday uh, before the, you know, the premiere of Maximum Venom, which is at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then also uh, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. So if you're in those areas, you know, definitely plan accordingly, it's going to be on Disney XD, and I'm very excited for it because now I'm caught up. I've been watching seasons one and two of the previous Spider-Man show, uh, and I started it right before my move from California and kind of finished it here and luckily all the episodes have been up on you know D disney plus app uh, but then also the youtube channel marvel hq has posted some of the episodes as well not there's a couple they didn't post that i feel like uh, are essential and tie into this uh, but still they did post a, a good chunk of the episode so uh, definitely check them out too i'll try to put a link to that down below and if you have the disney plus app you can watch it all as well so tonight you can watch maximum venom and i think if you have the disney now app you'll be able to watch it uh, pretty much instantly as well so um, you know make sure you download that app too and and maybe you can get early access to the show or watch it if you don't have Disney Channel. Uh, maybe you can watch it through the app, you know, you know, live while everyone else is watching it. So, uh, so yeah, so there's a lot of opportunities, a lot of ways to, you know, get caught up on this show and, you know, hopefully jump into the show and give it a chance if you haven't already. I've been watching a series now. I see where a lot of criticisms are coming from. I'm going to address that right off the bat. I have seen a lot of people out there be very critical of this show. Um, a lot of negativity regarding around this show. Uh, but for me personally... I, I, you know, I think it's pretty good. Like, I don't, it's not overly amazing for me, uh, but I think it's pretty good as far as like, you know, because to me, the standard's always going to be maybe the 90s animated show because that, you know, follows the comic book so well and it does very good, accurate interpretations of everything. But that was like 20 years ago, you know, or 25 plus years ago now maybe. And so you kind of need to bring new things to the table. And that's one thing I'll give this show. It kind of pulls from recent comics where it's like Peter Parker is in high school, but he goes to like a, like a magnet school kind of thing, like a, a think tank high school uh, that is run by Max Modell, who's a character from the comics from Horizon Labs. So he kind of has like a Horizon high school. So it's like for super smart kids. And and Peter goes there, Miles goes there, a couple of their other friends go there. And, uh, and then also, so there's Midtown it still plays a factor in it and that was a school Peter used to go to and he returns to it from time to time to hang out with Flash Thompson be his tutor on certain things you know like in class to help him out uh, they start becoming friends he starts off he's the bully as usual then they start becoming friends so I don't mind this like actually when I was watching it, I was like man where does the hate come from because this is not a bad show like it's pretty fun and I'm sure like I yes it's a show geared maybe towards more of my nephew's age he's like five six and then maybe a couple kids going up to like 10 or 12 maybe would still enjoy it and I'm sure some teenagers probably still enjoy the show too I have no doubt that maybe some adults enjoy the show because after I watched it I was like this isn't bad I don't know why there's uh, such vitriol for this I think a lot of times People fall in love with a, a, you know, the version they grew up with. So if you, you know, were a certain age when Spectacular Spider-Man came out, you'd probably you're still holding some kind of grudge that you didn't get season three of that show, and you're not giving other versions of Spider-Man a fair chance. Even when you say you do, I, I mean, I feel like maybe you don't, and that's how I was before too. That's me calling a spade a spade because I've been there where I'm like, no, 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 I love this version, and then I watch something else, I'm like, nah not my thing and then you know, years later after i've kind of calmed down and deconnected from it a little bit i'll go back and watch it and go like oh okay like uh, batman brave and the bold was something i didn't like at first to be honest with you and then uh by the time the third or third season came out that's when I really was like, let's give it another chance. And then I saw really what, you know, the beauty of that show was and what made it so fantastic. And so sometimes you just need a little bit of space and maybe some of you guys have it now and you're coming back with this new season for Maximum Venom. I hope so because... I actually kind of like this show. It's not a bad show at all. Uh, I'm not going to say I loved every single episode. There's definitely some criticisms I have of the show. But for the most part, I'm digging it. And so we're going to talk about six episodes of, uh, you know, various cartoons today. We're going to talk about three episodes from uh, Spider-Man. It's called Marvel Spider-Man. And uh, we're going to talk about that. Season one, there was three episodes called Symbiotic Relationship, Stark Expo, and Venom. So we're going to briefly touch on those real quick. And then also there's three episodes from season two of Guardians of the Galaxy uh, that ties into the symbiote lore. And that is episodes 12, 13, and 14 of season two uh, called The Symbiote War Parts 1 through 3. Uh, so yeah, there's there's some good stuff we're going to talk about today. And Guardians of the Galaxy is a show I'm probably, I watched a little bit more of that than just these three episodes. 
I'm a little bit more critical of that show. That one really didn't win me over too, too much. Uh, and there were some some things in these symbiote uh, episodes that really didn't pull me in either. Uh, but there was some stuff that I really got my attention. So we're going to talk about that. First, let's talk about Spider-Man because this is kind of where it sets up. In this version of Spider-Man, the V252 uh, is like this, you know, liquid thing that fell from space, you know, kind of like it's the symbiote, obviously. And, uh, and it's the Venom symbiote. And it was found at a crash site. We don't really know when and where it was found yet. They're going to explain that more, I think, in season three of the show. So, uh, so I don't want to spoil too much about that. But uh, it was kind of found in this, cr you know, crash site area, uh, landed on Earth outside of New York. And there's, uh, you know, th the government grabbed it, and then they decided to give, you know, Horizon Labs, since there's a lot of upcoming think tank bright young minds there, and Max Modell is in charge of everything, and he's kind of proven himself in the science world. They're giving him a chance to, uh, you know, study it, I guess. So it's kind of like in season, the Spectacular Spider-Man cartoon, where they let Dr. Kirk Connors work on it, and it was like a big deal to them. Same thing here. They're like, hey, we get to work on this cool secret government thing. We get checked in, on, uh, you know, periodically. The Avengers kind of stay in touch with Max as well, because obviously he's dealing with an unknown entity. So I kind of like that. I was like, all right, that's neat, you know, and it still brings the suit from outer space, so that kind of still stays in. Uh, but the suit does not seem to have a kind of a personality of its own at first. Uh, it, it's just the suit, and Spider-Man bonds with it in Episode 7, Symbiotic Relationship. It's something Max works on for a couple episodes, and then Peter decides to use it to fight against the Vulture. And the Vulture has, it's, it was Adrian Toomes, but now that he's out of jail and working for Norman Osborn, he kind of wants to, um, you know, stay back and kind of be more of the, the mind behind the suits. So they have these other uh, younger guys that are operating the suits now, one main guy in particular. So Spider-Man gets into it with him, and then once he gets the suit, He's obviously more powerful and able to, to stop him easier. And then it ends really well. Like, you know, Harry and Peter's relationship is kind of built up in this show and in this episode. And, you know, Harry, you know, has Norman there and Norman is kind of keeping an eye on Peter. Well, when at the end, when Spider-Man has the black suit, Norman is trying to take it from him. He's like, OK, because Adrian Toomes is working for him. So is this new younger vulture now that he's been defeated. And there's like there's two vultures flying around now, two people in the suits. Uh, you know, Spider-Man gets into a tussle with them and he's taken down and he's losing the battle. And they say, look, just give us a suit and you can come with us. You're, you seem like a bright mind, too, under that costume. Maybe you can help us with this thing. And Norman's trying to kind of seduce Peter into coming to the dark side, essentially. And Peter resists and fights back against the vultures, beats them. Uh, uses their powers to uh, of sonic disruptors to take the suit off. He bottles it up and he returns it back to Max Modell in secret, you know, um, and, and brings it back to his lab. So, uh, so that was kind of the first interaction with the Venom suit, and Spider-Man got to stick it to Norman Osborn, which is pretty cool. And I kind of like how they do Norman in this season, and uh, he's he's pretty neat. And the Vulture costumes are cool. They kind of look like those '80s ones when Spider-Man had the black costume in the '80s when Peter David was writing the book and stuff. And they had those like other Vulture guys that were swinging around or flying around. That kind of reminded me of that storyline, which was pretty fun. But then there's the next episode where Peter goes to the Stark Expo and he comes across Ghost, you know, like a new version of that character, Ghost. And Ghost is trying to break into the Stark Expo. Expo and take revenge on Tony Stark. And then once they do, like Max Modell has been saying, hey, I want to go to the Stark Expo as a scientist this year and bring them the research I've done on the symbiote, on the V252 or whatever. And so Peter is like telling him, Max, don't bring it there. It's dangerous. Let it just stay in your lab. Work on it there. You know, it's, you know, there's a lot of security there. Like, just do that. Don't bring it to a place like this. And Max, like, Peter, come on, we're scientists. We got to do these things. We got to take risks. And Max does come across sometimes as a little, uh, I don't know, like he seems like an irresponsible adult, an irresponsible scientist, almost borderline where a lot of the villains go in the Spider-Man comics where some of them, you know, will be like, no, we got to take risks. And then boom, they become Dr. Octopus or boom, they become, you know, you know, someone else. <laughs> it's like, so I kind of. I, sometimes Max, I'm like, ah, for an adult, he's such a hard-headed idiot sometimes. But there's some charm in there thrown into as far as like, you know, you still kind of root for the guy, even though you feel like he's kind of dumb at times. But I feel like when people see season three, they're going to try to clean that up a little bit. I try not to spoil too much. Uh, yes, I have seen the first two episodes of season three. So uh, so those will be is what airs tonight when you're watching this. Um, and we'll have my review. I'm going to record the, the, you know, my reviews and thoughts on that after the, these two episodes. So uh, so you, I think you'll kind of be turned around on Max. At least I was uh, in the in the third season. Um, so with this, you know, Spider-Man realizes he can't 
beat Tony, you know, a, a beat Ghost, and Ghost has already taken down Tony and taken over his armor and stuff. So Spider Man bonds with the black costume one more time and helps defeat uh, Ghost, but then he needs help taking the suit off. So Flash Thompson is there, and Tony are there, and they both try to pull on the suit to rip it off, and they use, you know, Tony uses his sonic disruptors and everything, and they finally get the suit off. And you're like, okay, good. You know, it's, it's once again, it's, uh, it's stopped. And, and Tony, I think, says something like, oh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it from now on. Um, you know, we got it from here or something like that. I can't remember exactly where the suit goes, but a sliver of it does end up a few episodes later in episode 13 uh, in the hands of somebody else. But we'll talk about that in a minute. I want to, before we jump to that, I want to go into the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. And I want to end with the, the Venom episode. Uh, so uh, so the, the three Guardians of the Galaxy episodes are from season two. And it's a, a trilogy of episodes called The Symbiote War. And basically the Guardians at this point in the show... Uh, Groot is is blossoming. He's he's trying to he wants to plant a seed to rebuild his homeworld and you know and and uh, bring life back to his homeworld. So they find his homeworld. They go and land on it, and they find out that it was overrun by symbiotes. And Gamora is even like, "Hey, I feel like I've been here before, like you know, many years ago." And Groot's like, "Well, I haven't been here in forever, and it looks like my society has been wiped out." So as they're investigating and looking into this, they come across a lab underground that Thanos ran, and this is why Gamora remembers the planet because Gomorrah remembers that Thanos uh, basically experimented on the symbiotes. So the symbiotes were this peaceful race, uh, and there's five remaining peaceful ones still on this planet that helped the Guardians, you know, escape the planet uh, at the end of the episode. But, uh, but the rest of the symbiotes that have overtaken the planet, they're, you know, kind of mindless rage monsters. And, uh, and they kind of are the symbiotes that we've kind of seen before in comics and cartoons. Uh, but I, they don't seem to have, like, personalities of their own to, for the most part. Uh, the ones that are peaceful do. They bond and then they seem to have, uh, you know, a nice uh, coexistence with the people they bond with, the guardians they bond with. Uh, but for the most part, these other ones are kind of rage beasts. And they find out and explain why. They say that the Clintar race was once a peaceful race that existed perfectly with the, the organisms on their planet. This is when I started getting interested in the show because the first like 15 minutes of this episode, uh, the first episode, I was kind of bored. I was like, oh man, I'm really not digging this at all. But once they put that new spin on things, like, hey, the Clintar were a peaceful race and then they were corrupted by uh, Thanos and Thanos bonded one to Gamora and turned her into like a Venom person at one point and then uh, separated the suit from her using a, a device that almost killed her. Uh, so then they're like, all right, well, we need to find that device and use it to separate Rocket because Rocket has been taken over by one of the rage uh, symbiotes and the Clintar, the peaceful ones, have taken over the other Guardians of the Galaxy to help Rocket um, and help them escape. So they were able to save Rocket even though the device almost kills him too, but they're able to save him and get off planet and then they end up blowing the planet up and Groot even says I'd rather you destroy my planet than let it be run over by these uh, beings and none of my race is even there anymore because these beings destroyed them all uh, these rage versions it destroyed them all so uh, so yeah so we need to get out of here so they take the five good Clintars and uh, and then escape the planet blow it up uh, but a chunk of the planet still exists and goes hurtling through space so after they drop off the five good Clintars to a safer planet and then Groot plants his seed there and uh, and it's going to take like a millennia for his uh, race and stuff from that seed to come back those five good Clintars say hey you know what we'll guard this seed with our lives uh, it's the least we can do for you and we will make sure that uh, you know that these beings that come in uh, they won't be harmed and they won't be mistreated so Groot says thank you they get in their ship and they go after that meteor so now the Milano and the Guardians are heading after this meteor which is heading in the second episode for a planet called Spartax which is a uh, Star-Lord's sister's uh, planet that she's like empress of and so they meet her they team up with her they get in a big battle um, they go try to divert that asteroid chunk of the planet they try to get that and, and redirect it towards the sun and so that way can, they can destroy it and all the symbiotes on it but they have a hard time doing that the symbiotes take control they redirect it back towards spartex and so the guardians make a suicide mission to get onto the asteroid or chunk of planet and to fight back and they are start to they're starting to lose actually until thor shows up and thor shows up and wipes out all the symbiotes that are on that rock um seemingly uh, but then at the end of the episode, he's like, all right, you know, I've, I've helped you. Now 
now Spartex is, you know, they, you know, some other guy was going to try to take over uh, when the Empress looked like she was going to die. So like some Starscream like second in command dude was going to take over, but obviously he didn't get to because the Empress comes back at the end and they save the day. Uh, but then Thor opens up the Bifrost and heads to Asgard. But as he's leaving the the planet, the you know chunk of the planet, one symbiote was left alive and it, it bonded into his cape without him knowing it and it takes him over. And so Thor goes back to Asgard as like a, a Venom Thor and or a symbiote Thor. And that's when the Guardians jump in after him before the portal shuts and they get stuck in Asgard having to fight uh, with Heimdall, having to fight against you know a possessed Thor. Uh, so Thor is pretty cool because then once Thor is taken over, he can't lift Mjolnir, which I thought was awesome. He was no longer worthy. So, uh, so the symbiote really couldn't figure out what to do with him. So it entraps him in something and then goes and takes over uh, Odin while Odin is uh, in the all sleep. And so Odin is now awakened and he's, you know, symbiote covered and he's all powerful and he's kicking the crap out of everything. And he goes over to the life tree and pollutes it and, and causes it to grow spores, symbiote spores. And then those symbiote spores grow and then start falling on other uh, Asgardians and start turning them into symbiotes as well. So now it's the five guardians of the galaxy, uh, Heimdall, and then Loki, who they break out of prison uh, to help them fight back. And uh, they do, they free Thor, and they're able to save Asgard, destroy uh, the suit that's covering um, Odin, and then also wiping out all the spores and everything and returning everything back to normal. So everything's gone, everything's dead, all these symbiotes are gone, uh, but this is not the last of the symbiotes. Apparently there still is a planet out there where Clintars come from, and uh, they're, they're mostly peaceful, but apparently Thanos did come across them and corrupt them at some point. So I don't know if Thanos corrupted them on their home world and, uh, and that's the thing that's gonna come fight you know, in Maximum Venom. I don't know if it's that or if it's just like another planet where Thanos dumped a bunch of Clintars and maybe we'll get, the Earth will get saved by the good Clintars at some point. Um, I don't know, it, it'll be interesting to see. So, uh, so those episodes are really, you know, they, they, they won me over by the end. Like I watched more of the other shows cause I was like, ah, this, is, this wasn't too bad. Let's check out some other episodes. And I kind of didn't really like Guardians 2 too much. It wasn't really my cup of tea. But these episodes, they won me over by the end of the first episode and they kind of locked me in. And so I was like, all right, I'm, I'm down. I'm willing to give this another try. So uh, so I did and I finished it and they, they were fun. Uh, but then now let's head back to Spider-Man uh, season one and we have episode 13, which is called Venom. And so now that the suit was ripped off Spider-Man, uh, you know, the main Venom suit, V252 or whatever, uh, we have the 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 suit has now shown up again and it's bonded with somebody else and we don't know who because they're not really talking much when they show up to fight spider-man but they are the big size it's like you know venom venom so it's like a big venom and uh, and they're coming at spider-man and the, the two of them are fighting and they spend the whole episode and you're trying to figure out who is this new symbiote like who has it and meanwhile this is the episode where peter parker is tutoring flash thompson and flash thompson has a rival at another school and they're going to get in a big you know football matchup you know coming up soon so you see the two of them them being angry at each other and they kind of use that other jock guy as a, a potential red herring to maybe think he might be the new Venom. Then they introduce a, a teacher who has like a, a, a cast on his arm and maybe and he's an old teacher of Peter Parker's. Maybe he could be the new Venom. So they kind of build this little mystery, which I kind of liked and it was kind of fun. But obviously in the end, what was really cool was, uh, you know, I didn't see this coming actually was Flash Thompson was actually Venom in this one. And I don't know why I didn't see that coming because obviously in the comic books, Flash Thompson has been Venom because we're going through that comic book right now. But when I was watching this like a couple weeks ago and got to this part of the show, I was kind of blown away. I was like, wow, I, I don't know why I wasn't thinking Flash, uh, but um, you know, it's cool that it's Flash. And so Flash on the football field turns into Venom in the middle of the football match, the big game, and Spider-Man has to go in and save him. And the cool thing is the two of them team up. Uh, Spider-Man separates the suit from him, and then Flash actually figures out, because he's been tutored by Peter Parker, he figures out a way to save these other football players. When the suit leaves him, it splits into three and takes over the, the brains or the minds, almost like a Venom Inc. style. It takes over three other football players. So now Spider-Man and Flash Thompson have to team up and fight those three football players. And they do, and, and Flash... It comes up with the thing that saves the day and Spider-Man enacts it and then they all, you know, go home happy. But uh, so Spider-Man remembers, oh, Flash, you and Tony pulled the suit from me originally and it must have hid on you and it must have been on you this whole entire time. And I'm so sorry because, uh, you know, uh, you know, I feel responsible and, and Flash like, hey, Spidey, 
I'm your number one fan. Like, you know, don't worry about it. We got it now. And now Max has it backed up, back, you know, bottled up again. And it's uh, it's uh, being transported back to uh, his lab to to work on and, and study further. So, uh, so that's kind of where this first season ends and these six episodes end. And we'll talk more definitely in the next episode. We have uh, three episodes from season two that have been a minute and the symbiote in it. We also have an Avengers Assemble episode that has a symbiote in it or mentioned in it. And then Guardians of the Galaxy, we have two more episodes of that. So we'll talk about all of those in the next episode episode so uh first though i want to hear what you think what is your thoughts on these episodes have you watched them have you watched the show i know we have a lot of descending opinions here so i'd love to have a peaceful conversation down in the comments of what you like what you don't like what you'd like to see improved on and what you're hoping to see in season three with maxim venom let me know down in the comments and as always we'll continue our conversation down there thanks so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you all in the future peace